I want to introduce you to someone who is a real inspiration. And you might recognize her from Barbara Walters 2020 or the documentary with Oprah Winfrey or the pages of Sports Illustrated for trans youth making a difference. And I'm sure it will come as no surprise to people in the room that 80% of trans kids feel unsafe in school. And you know, when I heard that number, I was, I was frankly surprised it was that low. But Jazz, who I'm going to introduce you to, is only 12, but she's, she's helping to change all that. And uh, she's really one of the most courageous people I've ever met. And uh, she's overcome unimaginable bullying and hardship. And many of us know versions of that kind of hardship. But the details of what Jazz went through will likely horrify you. Jazz was told uh, she couldn't use the girls' bathroom for five years. Only Jazz had more strength than her school, who was putting her in harm's way. And so when she had to go to the bathroom, she did so by sitting in her desk in her classroom. And because of her and her family, her school board adopted a trans-inclusive policy. Jazz was also banned from, from playing girls' soccer. And, and so what she decided to do was sit on the sidelines for two years, cheering for her girlfriends on her soccer team until finally she was allowed to play. And because of her, 12-year-old Jazz, the US Soccer Federation created a trans-inclusive policy for all. <laughs> that, to me, is strength. Jazz fought tirelessly to be treated like every other girl. To me, she reminds me of so many heroes who decades ago faced similar but slightly different hardships in the racist South where I grew up. And 12-year-old Jazz, by owning her own power, is winning. And so with that, I would like to invite Jazz to come out on stage. <laughs> I'd like to thank Vlad and everyone here for recognizing our family. I'm so proud of Jazz and everyone behind me. We just have a loving family. And I just want to say, it's always, always about unconditional love. Thank you, everyone, for, for being behind us. Appreciate it. And and GLAD is right behind you, and, and we look forward to working with you and, and helping change further the hardships that trans people face. And so thank you very much. Thank you. Unfortunately, Jazz is not alone. GLAD is working with other kids like my friend Coy Mathis. Coy, will you please join me on stage? Like Jazz, Koi didn't, Koi's school didn't treat her just like any other girl either. She too had to go to the boys' room or the nurses' station. And as we've seen tonight, what's going on in schools around the country to little girls like Koi and Jazz is a form of abuse. And GLAD has committed to, to help stop it, both in their particular schools and across the school system in the United States. I'm getting upstaged here. <laughs> Thanks to GLAD, Koi's story has been seen on the Katie Couric Show and CNN. And tens of thousands of people have already signed a change.org petition demanding her school take her out of harm's way and do the right thing. So in spite of all of the solicitations you'll hear tonight from us, we don't just need your financial support. We need your voice. I want each of you to take out your phones and right now sign a petition at glad.org slash Koi Mathis. 
We really encourage everybody in the room to sign the petition because we can do together what we cannot do alone. Thank you, Coy, and your family for coming here tonight and telling your story. And thank you, Jazz, for having the bravery to do what you did and, and face up to what you face up to. And, uh, you know, earlier tonight, I, I uh, was asked by Kettle One, who, who was my inspiration, and, and I wrote the both of you. So I really uh, can't say enough. Well, we still have a long road ahead, but the, the tide, what's that? Oh, oh. Do you want to say something? No? Well, thank you for coming. Hey, thank you. I'd like to go off stage too, but I've got like two more lines to go. <laughs> we still have a long road ahead, but the tide of history is on our side. The group of people assembled in this audience is really proof of that. And as long as this speech has been, I, I, I really appreciate you listening to it because I think that the subject of transgender equality does not get talked about enough. And, and so I encourage each of you to, to walk out of here with the same conviction that I have to make a difference in the lives of, of trans people around the country. So.